Hey everybody, it's Devin Dewar. Welcome to the first episode of Devin's Chat. Today we are chatting with Reiki master Victor Borjas. We will be having more chats with him and other healers down the road, so please check out my website www.devindewer.com and click on events to find out more about upcoming events. On April 15th next week at 10 a.m. Central, we will be speaking with another healer that I know, a dear friend and colleague, Tracy Day. So please check that out as well. Following is the recording from the Zoom platform that we tried to stream live, and I'm sorry it didn't work out going quite through that platform, but we will get that figured out for next week so you can watch live, but either way, there will be the recording. So enjoy this episode with Victor. It comes in a little late, but I can assure you that you did not miss any of the amazing conversation we had. Please leave in the comments below what you think or if you have any questions, and thank you for subscribing to my channel and liking and sharing my videos, and enjoy this upcoming chat with Victor Borjas. Um, well, Victor, I was just kind of telling them a little bit about, uh, just the different, I told them a little bit about how you and I met, um, when I was getting my certification, you you had already been practicing for quite a while when I met you, but, um, our paths just kept crossing and it, it's just, it was time for us to start working together more, um, consistently. So, um, and then, uh, Bonnie great, gave a great testimonial of working with you as well earlier. So, um, we, we really appreciate you doing this with us. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll get started? Oh, we can't hear you. Muted. Oh, I'll unmute you. Hang on, Victor. Okay, go ahead, we can hear you now. <laughs> Hi everyone, sorry I'm late. So the first thing um, that I was thinking during this whole trying to sign up and everything, I which I thought I was, uh, was I really miss just like going to a coffee shop and meeting up with people, <laughs> you know? And I feel like this is just the, gonna be the norm for a while. So learning to like find peace and like the chaos, I'm just like, whew, grateful to be here. Um, so thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to see every single one of you. And even if I don't know you, I'm happy to be in your presence, even if it's through a cell phone. Um, so thank you for being here. So a little bit about me, let's see. Um, would you like to know about Reiki or? Oh, you got muted somehow. Hang on, Victor, you're muted again. I don't know if it got bumped there. I am muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry about well, that. Well, I, I would love to, well, first of all, you're owner of the local business, uh, Reiki Room South Town. Yes. The Reiki Room South Town. Um, and so that's normally where you practice, but you also practice distance Reiki and, um, are a great healer. So, uh, yeah, I would love to ask you some questions if, but I, I if there's anything else you wanted to share about yourself, I just wanted to give you that opportunity. How did you get into Reiki? How did I get into Reiki? Well, I think I've said this before many times, but, um, I, so I'm just going to be brutally honest. So I'm in recovery. So I've been in recovery for, I'm going on 13 years in May. And um, when I first came into recovery, you know, with the entire like process of coming in was already like a huge deal when I was 20 years old. Um, and I met someone who was practicing Reiki at the time. And he told me a little bit about it. And I quite didn't understand what it was. But in that moment of my life, I was just willing to try anything. Um, and as soon as I had my first session, it was just like, so much had been lifted and just clarity came through and it really opened me up to a higher power you know and i lacked that at that moment in my life so i really believe that we are all channels of god and that god used whatever it was in that moment for my life and that's where i came through with reiki and that's how i discovered it so that was my very first experience with it yeah Yes, and I've had the pleasure of being around, uh, being at the other end of his healing abilities, and I know some of you here as, have as well. And uh, before you got on, Victor, I was talking to everybody about um, that often people do seek out Reiki when they've um, it, done everything else they possibly can, and it's kind of like, well, this is something I haven't tried. But I'm hoping that through you and I working together and spreading uh, what it is that people won't wait till the last minute to go to Reiki, that we can kind of normalize it. And I mean, I think that in certain parts of the country, it is very normal, but down here in San Antonio, it's not as well known. Um, so we're very lucky sure. to have you here practicing. Um, and Likewise. just to remind everybody, the, the 
the plan is for us to visit, Victor and I to visit a little bit, and then we'll definitely get to everybody's questions at the end, just so you know what's going on. So be thinking about what you'd like to ask. I want to make sure we get to all of you. Um, but Victor, can you say what Reiki is? Can you define it or at least what it is to you? Sure. So let's see. So there are, today, there's many forms of Reiki. So there's all types of Reikis that I've heard of. I've heard of uh, angel Reiki, fire Reiki. Um, I, I mean, there's like six or seven different forms of it out there. I've been trained to do the traditional Reiki, which is Usui Reiki. Um, it's really hard to explain. And that's the brutal truth. And I believe that any Reiki practitioner would say that as well. Um, it's just one of those things, you know, that I can tell you here in the moment and you're probably going to be like, what is he talking about? You know, that sounds so insane. But the reality is it's based on an Eastern philosophy. So it's very simple when it comes to the actual practice and the session, you know, all it is, it's either distance with hands above the body or touch. Um, so we believe that the body has a million different energy centers throughout your entire body, right? But there are seven main energy centers that we focus with. And the first one will be your root chakra, then it will go to your sacral, then your solar plexus, then your heart, and then your throat, and then your crown. Now, every single one of these energy centers, it's believed that holds a certain vibration and also governs certain parts of our lives. So whether it be security, emotional, spiritual, I mean, communication, whatever, you know, they all hold a certain area of our lives. What Reiki does, it helps, you know, especially during times of grief or lost or, you know, in, in my case, it was, um, I had just gone down the deep road in a bad, bad path and, um, I needed help and I had so many blockages throughout my entire body that what Reiki did for me in that moment is that it helped clear and restore energy where I needed it the most. Um, so I practice a Japanese positioning, which is the head, the shoulders, the abdominal area, the knees and the feet. And then we do that and then we have the client turn over and then we'll do the back. Um, however, I have added some techniques to my practice, you know, and these are just purely in, um, in just intuitive things that have come through me through the years. And I like to use, use some sage, some palo santo, um, feathers to clear the space, to clear the aura. So once your um, energy centers have been balanced, your aura then becomes strengthened and it becomes larger and larger and larger throughout the process of a Reiki session. Um, so with mine being more traditional, it's super simple and it's just the touch, you know, and some people are rather half the distance, which is okay. Um, and that's Reiki is still going to work that way, you know, um, whether the client be in the space with me or from, you know, on the other side of the world. And it's a lot of it honestly has to do with do you believe that God is greater than, you know, than a person and a person being in the same space together, you know? And at the end of the day, like my philosophy and my belief is that God is greater than that, you know? Um, that's the beautiful thing is that we get to grow together and we get to experience so much and share it with each other. And I think that's where the magic happens, you know? Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's what I practice. And a lot of it, has changed you know and I've you know throughout the years you just get to really get in touch with who you truly are and I've added some stuff to my own practice and you know as a result of me also receiving Reiki sessions um, there's been some things that have been really good for me you know that I've been able to share with others but yeah, yeah and speaker, from talking to other Reiki practitioners and my own experience as well everybody as they grow as a healer does tend to not only um, add things to their own practice, but there I hear um, all kinds of experiences of people's intuitive abilities naturally opening and being able to connect with 
passed away loved ones, um, angels, um, getting psychic visions, past life visions, all these kinds of things will open up depending on the healer and where you're naturally already open, where, where you naturally tend to be um, gifted, tends to grow first and then other stuff comes in. So I know from personal experience with you that, that you are certainly highly intuitive. And <laughs> so do you feel like that's something that you always were and that's what made you so sensitive? Or do you feel like it's something that grew from becoming, you know, intentionally becoming a Reiki healer? No, definitely. Yeah, I think that um, my biggest thing, and I, I didn't discover this till my 20s, you know, but I've always known that, I don't know, there was just something greater than the physical, you know, if that makes any sense. Hopefully it does to a lot of you, but, um, and it probably does if you're here and interested in these conversations. <laughs> um, but, because not everyone is, you know, it's just one of those things that your soul and your heart really calls you forward and you're just like, okay, I'm here for a reason and I am truly, fully going to believe it and go for it, right? So thank you for being here and yeah. for showing up. Yes, I'm so appreciative of all of you. And um, one of the things I keep hearing from my teachers and um, just my own experience, I connect with my angels every day um, and ask for guidance, is that those who are not awake or beginning to awake right now are going to have the hardest time with this shift we're going through. The shift. Oh my gosh. Right, okay. Would you like to speak? Yeah. To that? Yeah, so back to intuition, you know, it goes back to that. You're here because your intuition brought you here, right? And that's the truth. So um, I really believe in my heart of hearts that we are all intuitive beings, you know? Um, and I also believe that society has just tried so hard to, you know, take that away from people, you know? And it's like, you got to go to work. You got to make this much money. This is what you need to be doing at this point of your life and stuff like this that we forget, all, which is fine, right? Like, I love if people are driven by that and they wholeheartedly believe that. However, I, I also believe that we've lost connection to our spirit self, you know? Um, so, yes. I definitely yeah, absolutely Victor I'm so glad you brought that up and I I do want to go back to um you know the Reiki in a minute but that is a big discussion I'm having with other colleagues is that you know we've been essentially told to go home and sit down and have time out and you know mother earth needs a reprieve you know because we're looking at the way pollution is down and the way there's so much less waste and use of energy but also you know as humans um, we are being given an opportunity to connect, to reconnect with um, God, with the universe, with our higher self. And those of us who are already on this path, I really believe are being given a boost. We're, we are going to level up. We are going to be skipping a lot of levels by doing this work. Because if we do this work now, there, this boost that is happening for everybody is just going to carry us in this wave. So um, I, everybody I know on this call is interested in this, and I'm asking everybody that uh, does this type of work, what are you doing to maintain your spiritual hygiene? Um, and what does that mean to you to do that? And, and, and then as far as what are you advising your clients as well? Sure. So are you being, are you speaking more about like with the whole everything going on in the world or in general? Yeah, I, just, let's, let's say current events now. Um, I, but I like to know what you do in general, even in normal times, right? Sure. Know, you're saying before you got on the call, will there ever be normal again? This is the new. Yeah, normal, right? so, absolutely. Uh, but yes, I would love to know, you know, with all the fear out there, how do you handle your fear and how do you handle others fear when it comes at you? <laughs> that's a lot of question well <laughs> i think that you know we're all empaths and um fear I mean, it's getting a little better and i don't know if you can feel it from the very beginning especially here in the in america it was just, like the fear energy was so strong two weeks ago i mean it still is right because reality is we're still losing a lot of souls mm -hmm. right and um that's really hard and it's really freaking sad to watch right so there are days where i I come home and I'm just so like tired, you know, and I'm like, I don't have energy to do anything. I want to go back to my room, read a book and go to bed, 
you know, and I think I allowed myself to do that maybe two or three days. And then finally, after a lot of prayer and meditation, I realized like how important it is for me more than ever to stay connected to God, right? And I use the word God because to me, God is ultimate source. He is everything, you know? Um, and the connection, the relationship between my spirit and God is so important today. You know, so what do I do? I try, you know, and actually I think about you all the time, Devin, is I write. You know, I am, um, I've realized that pen to paper, especially during these times, allows me to liberate so much going on within me. And as soon as I write it out, and I am actually like physically seeing the words that I'm writing, it brings comfort. You know, so that's one of them. I don't follow specifically the journaling process and everything, okay. but I'm, I'm just a free writer and I let it out, you know, and that's been one of my outlets is writing. Um, another one is doing things like this, you know, because this is where we heal is in connection with each other right now, right? Because we're obviously being told like to social distance, stay away, which is honestly probably one of the best things we can do right now but also like where do we find our physical connection and you know have real heart-to-heart -heart conversations with our loved ones right and unfortunately it has to be through virtual yeah cell phones or whatnot which is fine but doing stuff like this you know so I call four of my bestest friends who I know are like you know super rooted in their spirituality and we get on, you know, Zoom and we talk for an hour or two, you know, and we just talk and share solutions with each other. Um, so that's another one. So valuable connection in any form, you know, which yes. uh, may lead a little bit into distance Reiki. Would you mind talking about that a little bit? Um, Absolutely. I think yeah. people who are brand new to it are kind of like, well, how can you do it if you're not? In yeah. The yeah, sure. So the way that I've been taught is you can either use a picture of someone. So say you call me tomorrow and you're like, hey, Victor, do you think you can send me some Reiki? I would say, absolutely. So I would, you know, I would ask for your permission first, right? Because that's the way Reiki works. It's, I cannot send Reiki to someone who isn't willing to receive it. You know, say you're across the world and it's like, oh my gosh, my friend Evan, she's really sick. Um, she never believed in Reiki. She knew I did it, but she never was interested in it. There's no way that I would be able to connect to your soul, you know? Um, however, if you were, oh, you're obviously open to it and you know, some, you're like, okay, can you send me some Reiki? What I would do is I, tr to me, the two forms that I've noticed that work the best is either a photo or the name or your name. Like I would just write your name down and put it down to a space where I feel really rooted and grounded. And I would take the same forms that I would as if you were in my room. So I would do my prayers and then um, invite, you know, angels, guides. Um, and then I would just place energy over your name, you know, so it's a vis visualization, but also an intention. Um, and that also seems to work. And a lot of the times also, um, if it's a certain situation, I would write it down and just send love and Reiki to it. But yes, there are forms and there's also um, techniques that we've been taught to follow that. Absolutely, and, and to our point earlier about our way our, developed, uh, our techniques develop, for me, it, it was a few years in after I'd been practicing Reiki, but I was shown a visualization by my angels for doing Reiki on myself. Um, because yes, you can do it with your own hands um, on yourself, but sometimes I would be laying in bed and I wouldn't be feeling well or I was just too tired. I was shown a visualization, visualization technique for um, almost forming my body energetically over and for me I do it kind of over on another part of the room so I can go through my clearing movements, um, awesome. and come back and do Reiki on myself in that form. So it, it, when we're talking about energy, I mean, absolutely everything is made of energy. Um, and so if you think about what makes up a cell and then what makes up the air and what makes up the stars, um, it, it's all energy. And when we touch our hands, um, if 
anybody wants to like rub their hands together and feel the warmth they feel there and bring their hands in and out. Yeah, let's do it. This is feel that, feel the energy when you're here. And then as you slowly come in and then slowly come out and then shaping it into a ball, you can feel that, you know, and even if you say, okay, well, that's the heat of my body. Well, heat is energy, right? We use, yes. what about the, every one of our cells has energy in it. Static electricity, that's energy. So just because we can't see it physically, you know, it, that, I think that's where people, they have a hard time with the distance energy healing. Yes. And I always recommend that you, you find an authentic healer, somebody that you feel comfortable working with, because um, this is a discussion I have with other colleagues as well. There are people out there that aren't really in their authentic selves. And so I always recommend that, it, that when you start working with somebody, if for some reason it doesn't feel right, you're just not meant to work with that person. So Absolutely. I just want to mention that as well, because I know, I mean, you can go online and get lost in these wormholes, um, different websites and pages and master healing and all this stuff. And it, I mean, for me, it can be pretty off-putting. Yes. And that's something that I love that you bring that up because that's something that I actually tell clients who you can usually tell who you're going to be working with and who you're not, you know, and that's totally okay. So in the most loving form, I always say like, please find someone that you feel comfortable with, you know, if you don't with me or whatnot. And I really encourage that, you know, because it's just the experience is so beautiful. You know, after you've received Reiki several times, it's just something so pure and innocent that really helps the person align to their true authentic self, like you say, you know? Yeah. So yeah, That's I love it. Well, um, and so do you have, oh, Donna, we were going to do questions at the end, but is it, oh, okay. it pertains to, to this? If you go yes. ahead and ask. Yes. Uh, Victor, when you were describing, you know, how you either take a photo or a name uh, and then you do Reiki over that, do you, um, do you set a particular time and does that person sit somewhere, you know, in a private Good space? Good question. Good question. So sorry, were you... Was, yes, yeah, that's my question. Okay, yeah, so that's something I do suggest as well. You know, it's so as soon as we, we get in connection with that and we set a time, that's so important that the client is also on the same either mentality or vibration, whichever way you want to look at it, you know, and I make sure that they are, you know, they're not at work or they're not surrounded by others, that it's a very sacred time for them where they can really connect to who they truly are. And in the moment, I also have them practice some breathing exercises. Um, and sometimes I even encourage them to, I would let them know to like place your hands in certain spots of your body because that's where we're gonna be at this time. You know, so I believe that we all have a, you know, divine energy within us where we can truly work on ourselves. And then if we have someone else facilitating across distance, that's even way better, right? Um, so like what Devin was talking about earlier, uh, where she spoke about the energy and everything is energy. Um, one way that my teacher always taught it to us was she's a mom and she would always say, as soon as my kid falls or hurts themselves, or, you know, they tell me they have pain in a certain spot. The first thing I do is I put my hands on wherever it is that they're in pain, you know? So, and that's to me, that's a lot, that's a simple way of looking at Reiki, right? Yeah, so, that's wonderful. Yeah. Or even just when you, if you're, if you're one of those people who's touchy feely and you walk up and you, Hey, how are you doing? And rub their shoulder, you know, that person gets a little boost from that, you know, unless they're, they have their own reasons for not. But I wanted to, that kind of leads into, I wanted to speak what you're saying about getting the person's permission. So I know this can be a little confusing and there are healers out there that are like, no, 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 that's not true. You can send healing love. I think the difference is for me, the way I understand it is we're all here to learn certain things. We're all here to grow spiritually and not everybody can learn by having others help them. Sometimes they have to go through the challenge and figure it out on their own. So when they come here and they have these challenges, 
um, and somebody's always trying to heal them, it's taking away from their own journey. Um, also, it's just, what do we talk about when you just say, don't give away free puppies? Does the person who get up, get the free puppy, give it just as much love and respect as the person who spent all the time planning for the puppy, went and made, paid the adoption fee, you know? So it's also that exchange of energy that that person is saying, I am open and I'm open to receive your energy. And then whether they're giving you energy in the form of an offering and payment or just some other type of trade-off, there is a, a balanced exchange there. Would you like to speak to that at all about the free will aspect and the exchange of energy? Sure. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I, and I, that's what, that's the beautiful thing about energy work is that at the end of the day, it's all about intention, right? And if you have good intentions in your heart and your highest intention is for the greater good at all times, you know, I'm sure energy will flow where it needs to, right? And that's the reality. So even think about it as prayers, right? When we, um, I, I was raised Catholic, so I would go to church, right? And I would see people on their knees praying, right? I'm sure that all that has a certain reaction to the higher good, right? So whether it be they were praying for a specific person or thing, regardless, they're tapping into a higher vibration. Um, yes. And that That's to true. me is the intention, whether a person receives it, wants it or not, it's out, you know, it's being, it's out there. It's literally energy being sent to the higher source. Um, so yeah, I believe that each person, each practitioner has in their hearts what they feel is right for them. I personally have noticed that it's harder for me to connect to certain individuals who struggle with the idea of I don't believe in this or you know sure I'll try it but okay whatever you know mm -hmm. um, sometimes it has worked right um, but others it just seems a little bit harder to connect you know and which is fine and like you said people it's like everyone has the dignity to experience their own life like they should right, right. Um, sometimes don't get me wrong sometimes i want to be like come here you need this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it is hard right but that's or, part of protecting your hygiene as well is yes. allowing them to walk in their path so you know because it works as healers that is something we want to do is help the, you know that and we can we can give our energy away too much um, I want to go back to what you said earlier about being raised a Catholic and saying prayers. I, I was also raised, I was raised Episcopalian. I'm a Christian. I work with Jesus and he works with me every day. So what would you say to people who are, you know, really love their religion and they're, they're skeptical about this? How does, how does it feel to believe in an Easter? Sure. Um, healing yeah, I... And, you know, you're a devout Catholic or you're a devout Christian or other types of religions. Wow, yeah, that gets so controversial. Um, it really does, and that's the reality because, you know, I actually have a friend who's a priest, and we've had this conversation, and he's totally for it, right? He's very supportive, and he believes that God works in mysterious ways, and if this, if this is a way that I'm, you know, being of service, go for it, right? Um, and then there's others who believe that this is a channel for bad and, you know, you don't need to be doing that. It goes against the religion. It goes against so much. Um, but at the end of the day, my suggestion for anyone who, who is a devout Catholic or Christian who really believes in, in their religion, I 100 purely respects that at all times, you know, and I believe that, you know, if they are slightly interested but they're still very rooted that's that's okay and most of the times I would just suggest to that person or that client to continue to pray right and to continue to ask their higher power their God if is this right for me you know and if it is please make it abundantly clear to me every single day until the moment comes right um, and most of the times when we they do that I feel like we end up meeting you know, exactly. we end up meeting, we end up talking, um, because obviously I want them to be 100% with themselves and with what they truly believe in, you know, and, and a lot of the times God just 
gives them like some sort of sign or feeling or intuitive intuitive thought like go for it right yeah because that yes. channel's already open and that i just want to point out one more thing too i mean this should always feel safe energy yes. healing in general so whether you end up working with victor at some point or any, somebody else that you already know that that is, you know, part of your connection as well. And, um, you know, if there is something that makes you not feel safe, then that that's not who you're meant to work with. I know that like, that's one of the things for me when I was first getting into the healing is saying the Lord's prayer before I went into any type of session or practice, because I wanted to feel shielded and protected. And, um, the Lord's prayer is one that made me feel that way before I, you know, it still does. But as far as making you feel protected, but again, to your point about it being controversial, I mean, I think that everybody is meant to walk the path that they're on and, as a healer, we can be here and be available to them, but you know, it's going to be ultimately up to them to want to heal themselves, which is really what's going to help everybody. Right? Amen. Yeah. So, um, well, did, before we move on to the question and answer part, I wanted to say, was there any experiences you wanted to share that you've had recently um, that, you know, either with clients or with yourself, um, that that you'd like to share with the group just to kind of remind us all of what's available to us out there sure do you could you elaborate a little bit more well um so okay when when we start to get lost in fear and for example i'll say one of the things i hear with my clients when i'm doing intuitive coaching sessions is they're going along doing really really well and then they go they hit a almost a plateau or a wall with it and they start to not believe they they're like i don't know if i believe any of this and they they, they want to just kind of throw the towel in and this is when because of one of the tools i teach my clients is the is the journaling technique where they're creating a book of evidence of this experiences that they're having and working with energy um, to go back and see all their successes and how far they've really come because we often forget to give ourselves credit um, you know, the confidence that you have as a healer now, I would imagine is different from the confidence you had when you first started. Right. Absolutely. So, so what would you say, what is something you could share with us that was just, um, a really great boost to how you were meant to be here as a healer. And it can be from the past or recently, but I just think it's always helpful for others to hear about those types of experiences. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, I love the word healer, but it also like has always kind of like really given me like this weird, like, oh my God, that's way too much responsibility. I don't think I can do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so with that being said, I think that um, that was kind of like, sometimes we are so afraid to, to truly tap into like our gifts right? And I know in my heart of hearts that if you are a creation of a higher being, like you have a gift. You really do. You know, every single soul on this planet has a gift. Um, and we forget that, right? Like it's so easy to just not think of us that way, Absolutely. right? So um, it's easier for me to be like, oh, no, I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. Who do I think I am, right? Um, so the confidence to me comes from God, and that's the truth. Um, and that's something that it's gotten a lot stronger throughout the years of practicing, whether it be Reiki meditation or even being a genuine human being, you know, um, on a daily basis. So it's just, it, to me, it's all about intention, and it's all about um, realizing that I have to work on myself before I work on anyone else. You know, there's absolutely nothing I can share with anyone if I am not working on me, you yeah. know? And um, <clears throat> whether it be physical, emotional, spiritual, whatever, right? Like, I can't go into the world and be like, oh, let me do Reiki on you. And someone asked me, like, how many times have you had Reiki? Uh, none. You know, yeah. or, or I studied it online and whatever, you know, to me, it's just like, it, there's no way that I can be a source in that way. So I, yeah, I think the more we, we work with each other and I practice Reiki or meditation or, you know, genuine love for humanity, um, 
the greater my boost of God's love flows in, you know, uh, or confidence, whatever way you want to look at it. And when we become closer to our higher selves, um, that's where we truly have that boost, you know, and uh, I think the most every single i'm going to say this every single reiki session that i've had with my clients have has been so special you know and that's the reality because at the end of the day like not only are they having an experience but also like it just shows like how good god is to every single one of us you know and um the beautiful things have been like you know i think the most beautiful for me has been like when the client you know is done and like has tears of joy or some sort of release mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and um i have nothing to do with that you know that's the truth like i'm just a channel you know and that's all god and i think that that goes back to finding your relationship with your higher self and like your higher power and like truly truly working on that every single day and just you know becoming a channel of that and then when you can do that i think that that's where the confidence comes from you know absolutely um, um, I, I love what you said about that being a channel for God, because that's what we're actually working on. All of us every day is just opening, 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 opening. And right. when I'm working with my clients. I'm always talking about your intuitive muscle, you know, just like when we I go love that. out, we're building our muscles. This love is something we, we have to work and hone and it doesn't just happen. It builds, but the more we work on it, the more we begin to trust ourselves and you know for those of us who work out i know i've had days where i don't feel like working out you know and sometimes it's because i need a break sometimes it's because i need to just push through it and just trust that i'm going to feel better afterwards so that trust and that opening i think is what this is really all about so that that's really really helpful and i just wanted to share one quick experience with you all and then open it up for questions um when i was first practicing reiki I did um, a lot of my homework and stuff with other humans, but they were also other Reiki students. So it's that safe place of, well, we're all here, so we're all open to it, right? Um, so when I had to step out into a more, uh, you know, I had to push myself out um, and try it other ways, I went to animals because I had always, always had animals, always worked with animals. And so um, my first experience, this was even before I um, went through all my animal communication training, um, is I, I asked my friend if I could work on her dog. She had a, a Doberman pincher that had hip issues and um, he was getting older. And um, I, I sat down and I was like, she, she was like, hey, you know, I trust you um, to work on this. And you know, took a deep breath, sat down, started working with him. He was about, I want to say four feet away. Um, I, when I work with animals, I tend to kind of pull my energetic field in a little and let them come to me. So I didn't go up to him initially, but I am not kidding you. She witnessed it. Our kids witnessed it. He backed up and put his hips under my hands and wow. stayed under there. And then I just literally was focused on saying open. <clears throat> and uh, at some point he backed away. And that's kind of another technique that I learned through my animal. I did take some animal Reiki classes as well after my Reiki, um, regular Reiki classes. And they talk about, you know, allowing whether, I mean, humans too, babies, animals, uh, allowing them to kind of let you know when they've gotten enough. And the, the dog went off and got a bunch of water to drink and went to the bathroom and was trotting around the next week. So um, it was, that's another thing that, that I found happened with uh, animals was they would get pretty thirsty um, from just getting all that energy and cleansing and usually have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, that, was, that was one of those moments that I will go back to every time I'm starting to feel blocked because it was one of my first raw experiences that was just you can't make it up you know the dog's yeah. not like oh <laughs> you're to work on my hips you know yeah so uh, i just wanted to share that because I, I think sure. everybody um can benefit <clears throat> from hearing each other's experiences so yeah. um, i'd like to go ahead and go to the question. can i can i say something real oh, yeah, quick absolutely. just to that um so i think 
one of the coolest things for me has also been like when I finish a client, a lot of the times, most of the times is that I, I get these visions, right? And which I've always had visions, just never like to a specific person. Um, but a lot of the times it's like certain visions that I get of past ones around their lives. And it's always been like something so beautiful. So yes, that's one of the experiences that I can share on that's been really rewarding where I'm like, okay, there's absolutely no way I do that, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. And they're just like in tears in a positive way, you know? And I'm just like, okay. Well. And then a lot of the times it's just like, oh my God, what am I doing? You know, but it's yeah. like, it's just something that needs to be said or done through for a healing process for that specific person so yes that's one of my experiences I suppose I wanted to share with I love that yeah did you have a question I just wanted to speak to what Victor said the first time I went to him and you know I'm, I'm a pretty I'm not pretty open I'm very open to alternate forms of healing and um, just based on some personal situations um, around the middle of last year that just sort of culminated it felt like life was just throwing a lot at me and um, so when I found Victor, um, it was it was just really interesting. I just I, the only way I can describe how I felt was very jacked up. I'm very susceptible to energies. I can feel within five minutes if I'm going to be a match with somebody or if you know there's somebody who needs to kind of stay in my peripheral. And I just was drawn to him immediately. And so when I um, had the Reiki session, um, it, it literally I just felt myself unwind. I mean, at one point I was crying. I didn't even realize it. But as we said after we finished. Um, Victor shared with me uh, some things that he had seen while he was working on me and they were things that he could not have known um, at all and so you know his gift is amazing it is truly amazing I cannot say enough um, about you, just Bobby. how unbelievably healing he is um, you know and and how he is able to channel whatever gifts he is receiving whatever energy he's receiving um, it's just an amazing thing. And he, and so when I went back to him the second time, I was um, kind of in a darker place. And I told him that I was like, you know, I've, 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 I'm really sad right now. I've got a lot of um, things going on that are, that have been really tragic and sad. And um, the way he worked on me that day was different than the way he had worked on me the first time where I was more anxious. Um, and again, same thing. I mean, just this release of, of balled up energy that I could feel inside of me. So it's, but you have to go into it just open. Every time I go in, I just feel like I just leave everything outside and I go in and just lay there. I'm like, okay, just do your thing. I'm ready. You know? <laughs> um, it's, it's phenomenal, truly. So I highly recommend checking it out. Oh, that's a wonderful Thank testimony. You, Thank you, Bonnie. I love Bonnie. Did anybody else have any questions that they wanted to ask? Oh, Karen, I'll unmute you. Okay. Um, this is so great, by the way. Thank you all so much. Um, I was wondering, what does it, I've never had Reiki, I, I'm Reiki curious. <laughs> <laughs> what does a Reiki session look like in person? I know you, you kind of touched on what the um, distance is like, but if you have anything sure. else to say on the distance as well, I'm just wondering what a typical Reiki session is like. Yeah, absolutely. So first timers are my favorite. Um, I, I always, as soon as, you know, the client arrives, we sit down and chat for at least 10 minutes, right? And I, I get to know them a little bit. I tell them a little bit about myself and we just kind of talk. And I think the most important thing that I want to know is where do you stand when it comes to your spiritual self, you know? And I, no judgment, just a genuine question, you know, do you believe in a higher power? Are you religious or what? going on and I think that that's really helpful when it comes to like the process so once we've kind of got to know each other then I ex explain a little bit of what to expect right mm -hmm. and also have no expectations at the same time you know because it's kind of a, one of those things that it's like yes this is what we're going to do physically but at the end of the session like just try to relax that's the most important thing to me is just relax if anything, this is going to be a relaxation technique, you know, that possibly you might use for a really long time of your life, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, like that's one of the most important things. So once we get to know each other, I explain a little bit of what I do with Reiki and how we're gonna go about it. I always ask if they prefer um, distance or touch, you know, mm -hmm. because that's super important. 
um, super, super important, especially to me. Some practitioners don't and they just go for it, you know, and I think that it's super one of those things that some people just prefer to have the distance versus the don't touch me, you know, which is okay. Um, so, and then we have the client, I like to let them know that we're going to do two different, so the first 30 minutes, usually we do an hour session. Um, the first 30 minutes, what I have them do is just face up on the table. So it's a massage table and they come in fully clothed. Um, the only thing I do ask is that they take off their shoes. Um, and that's about it. And then, so they'll face up and then I, I, I like to touch their aura around. So I'll go around the body without touching them physically. And I like to feel, because that's one of the things that I feel like I'm really good at. I can feel like how where they might need more boost and where it's super strong, right? Because so if we have different energy centers throughout our body, then say your heart, say you're a very loving person and you just take everything to heart, you're probably gonna have a really hard front center energy here, you know? But if you struggle with communication or expressing your true self or creativity, then you might have a lower energy center here. So I like to feel that first. Um, I also let them know if they can keep their eyes closed or open, you know, whatever they prefer. Um, it's probably better to keep your eyes closed and just try to connect to your inner self. Um, I express a little bit about breathing, you know, like if they struggle with meditating or with anything like that, just connect to your body, you know, um, start to talk to your body and, you know, to your breath. And do you feel discomfort anywhere in certain areas or throughout the session, just kind of connect to your body. That's the most important thing. Um, and then once we've worked on the front, then we'll have the client turn over and then we'll work on the back energy centers. And then I do a clearing in the back when we're done. So I just basically, what that means is um, with the client's permission, I just sweep the back with my fingers. So I literally cleanse the back energy and then I, throw it out and then we do a final fluff and that's like an aura strengthening and that's about it so it's about 30 it can be anywhere from to me the best sessions are 45 minutes to 90 minutes mm -hmm. um yeah but i mean reiki can be at uh, 15 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes but yeah okay and, and you mentioned the hands on or hands off is an option you give to clients, whatever they're comfortable with. Is there one that you think is more effective? Is it more effective with the hands-on or does it matter? Yeah, I think they, but it doesn't matter, honestly. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I really do. I feel like sometimes hands-on just kind of gives some sort of comforting energy, you mm -hmm. know, especially I've noticed on the shoulders. Mm -hmm. So like when I place my hands on the shoulders, I can literally feel just it's like a release throughout the entire body. Um, the knees too. So specific spots for me would just be the head, the shoulders, the abdominal and the knees and the feet. Um, but yes, it doesn't matter. I think that at the end of the day, like I said earlier, it's all about intention. You know? And um, I believe in my heart of hearts that it's gonna flow where it needs to. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, if, if I feel drawn to like, go for it, I go for it, right? And um, I think that's also something really beautiful to mm -hmm. be a whole yeah, experience. I have to mention yes. to you that we're trained when we're doing um, work on animals. Uh, Ruby, I, I mentioned earlier as a fellow animal communicator that we do a bladder sweep um, at, kind of like that. Oh, from that's the cool. To the, to the tail yeah. like that, that really releases things and it can be really helpful for the animals. And I had forgotten about that technique, you know, uh, learning that back when I used to practice it until you mentioned it. I'm like, it's so fun to see all the parallels with that. Um, and, and just so you guys know, I am planning to have more of these. I have a, if, in case any of you have to jump, I want to get to more questions, but, um, we are going to be talking to another healer next Thursday at 10 AM, Tracy Day. She's a local healer here about some of her modalities and to Karen's question about the hands-on type of thing. Um, you know, acupressure is another form of, of yes, that's very valuable. And the tapping, I'm hoping to have one of these about uh, emotional freedom technique. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, but it's very helpful. And that is physically touching, but you're doing it on yourself. 
in certain pressure points without the actual pressure. And it is kind of linked to acupuncture points, but without the needles. So um, there's so many fascinating ways that energy healing can work, whether your hands are on or not. And to Victor's point, it's like, it's more about whether that person is really open to that touching um, and whether the healer is like, okay, yeah, this needs touch here, you know, because even with getting a massage, you know, that's a, that's a healing technique as well. Oh, yes. Love it. Love my okay, massages. So have questions. Uh, Mallory, did you have a question? I do, yeah. Hi, Victor. Um, I was wondering sort of about like your, rec both of y'all's recommendations on thought redirection. So I start my mornings, I try to be very intentional, get solo time. Um, but I have found that amid this, my, like, I, when I, I feel powerful when I'm with my family, when I'm with my friends. And so I'll start my day really cool, but then I see a news notification or um, I talk to my mom on the phone instead of seeing her. Like, how, what are you doing to sort of ground yourself and remind yourself that this isn't permanent, but at the same time, like, we have to get used to it. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Um... First of all, congratulations on your baby boy. I don't think I've actually told you that. Yet. It's been a while uh, since we, yeah. I know. But uh, yeah, you know, I think it's just, gosh, there's so much going on in the world. And, um, and it's scary, right? Like, that's the truth. And I think that I said this earlier, we're all in path. So it's hard for us not to take it all in. Because um, I believe in my heart, so we all care so deeply, even if we don't know, like, the certain person that's going on. Um, but one thing that I have noticed that I'm really focusing in on, and I've been working on this really hard the past week, is I am being of service to the best of my ability every single day, right? And with you, it's your being a mom, being a wife, a daughter, or whatever, you know, your friends. And um, I think that <clears throat> if we're having this conversation right now, for some reason, I'm feeling right now in my heart that we are kind of like, like the the soldiers of the friend group or the family, you know? I don't know why I'm just sensing that. But I think that the message of that is that um, we kind of have to have that mentality, you know? And we have to stay strong, you know, especially for those around us. Um, I know a lot of people come to me for like comfort or, you know, like, oh, Victor's always going to have the right things to say. And that's not necessarily true. But at the end of the day, I, I think that one of my jobs is to help people get, you know, to a good headspace. Um, and I struggle with that myself, you know, like every single day. It's just something that, and especially now, it's so easy for me to go from, oh, everything's going to be okay to, oh my God, nothing's going to be okay. You know, could, and I could I speak to that a little bit too? Yeah, absolutely. Or please. Is the, you know, coming people coming to you needing this from you is why it's so important that we ourselves are are doing things for ourselves, right? Self care, taking that nap if you need it. Um, you know, go, doing an extra long meditation. Uh, Mallory, I I use affirmations a lot um, to change my mindset. Um, and, and because I, I'll find my thought process going, oh, when is this going to happen? And now my daughters don't get to do this. And now I don't get to do this. And what's going to happen this summer? And you know, yeah. that, that, um, my go-to thing is I will start off by saying, you know, I am in perfect health and kind of bringing myself. Okay. So there's something I'm grateful for. And I had a teacher once say, try to be grateful in something else at the same time and see what happens. It's really hard to be in gratitude and feel something else. I'm not saying it's not possible, but that is something that I will add to the affirmation if I'm finding, you know, I need is like, I am grateful to be here at this moment in perfect health. And, you know, there are, I do have a list of things I'm able to do because of the quarantine that normally I wouldn't. So yes. some people do that. Um, so I just, I just wanted to share that that's what's been working for me. Also, I, when I work with my clients, I always talk about, um, shielding yourself and cutting cords with that energy. So if you have a relative call you up and they're frantic and panicked about the latest headline, 
you know, cutting cords with all of that and shielding yourself from it afterwards will help you get back to a balanced state. And I have some videos on that on my YouTube channel, but we also talk about it in other stuff that I do. Um, so maybe try checking that out as well, because I will even forget to do that. I will forget to shield and cut cords. And then a news flash comes up on my Facebook feed and it's like, ah, fear. And I, I got to, you know, turn off, cut cords and go into a place of gratitude. Yes. I think that was helpful. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. All. Yeah. Thank you, Mallory. Did anybody else have any questions? Kelly? Do I need to unmute you? You're, you're there. Victor, you mentioned uh, uh, Reiki meditation. And I, I love meditation. I certainly have my own struggles with it like everybody else. But when you said Reiki meditation, it was like you combined two words that I need to know what that is. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> meditation? Sure. So, okay. So there are several. For a practitioner, it might be a little different. Um, only especially because it's before I work on anyone, I have to meditate for at least 20 minutes. So what that means for me, it's just a lot of shielding, like uh, Devin just spoke about, um, protection, because obviously I'm going to be exchanging my aura with someone else's aura. However, we're also taught that I don't get to give anything to anyone and no one gets to get give me anything of theirs, you know? So there's like that immediate like divine, I'm just a source, right? So um, that's one. And Reiki meditation for me, when it comes to working on someone is different than I want to boost Reiki for my day, for example, right? Um, so I think that's something anyone can do is Reiki boost for the day, let's call it that. So um, what that means for me, it's really simple. I like to, you know, sit down somewhere comfortable and just connect to my body. That's one thing that I found that's so helpful is connecting to my body, my physical body every single day. Like how do I feel in certain areas of my body? How's my posture? You know, um, I now even start talking and connect to my voice because it's all a vibration. So, um, so I like to connect to my root first. And what that means is your root chakra or your root energy center. Um, and I like to see myself feeling rooted to the earth, right? And I'll, whether it be like a vision of like roots flo uh, floating out of the bottoms of my feet into the earth or vice versa, pulling energy out from other earth in. Um, so that's my beginning of the day is just feeling super rooted, you know, um, and then if I really have time, then I'll connect to different energy centers and I'll even invite like some confidence or if I'm going to be speaking a lot, you know, like clear communication, um, honesty, just different like affirmations to each center. So to me, that's energy flow. And then sometimes like uh, what Devin showed us earlier with the hand rub. I do that daily and I'll show you guys right now how a quick little uh, energy clearing that you could do for your own aura and it's super simple and I do that, I practice that daily. But yeah, I think that's certain Reiki meditations that I do on a daily basis show before. I, huh? Yes, please show us the demonstration. I'd love, we'd love to see it. Are you gonna, you need to put down your headphones or? I do, but okay, I'll be quick, I guess. Um, oh, here, I'm gonna go do. <laughs> Don't be quick. <laughs> well, it's just I'm on my cell phone, so I don't know how it works. Here, let's, hopefully this works. I have. <clears throat> oh, we lost your video. There we are. Yeah, I know it doesn't let you do horizontal on iPhones. Can you see me? I can see you, yes. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Hey, say that again. Yes, we can see you and hear you. Okay. So, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, this is basically a quick aura clearing. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to stand up. And then you want to put your feet toe to toe. 
So you connect your feet. You, your knees are very important in this session. So you want to make sure that your knees are locked, right? Sometimes in um, different modalities, they tell you to bend the knees just a little bit. And this time, we're going to lock the knees. So you put your feet together, lock the knees, and then you kind of do what Devin taught us earlier, right? You make sure your posture is very straight and upward aligned. So you kind of open up, you rub your hands together like this. And then you start to play with your energy. So you kind of rub until you feel higher or lower, whatever you do. You do that for several seconds. And then you're gonna expand the arms out, fall, um, palms facing down, so just like this. You wanna make sure that your energy from your palms are pulled to the ground. So almost as if there is a pole holding you up like this with strength, right? And then it doesn't matter which arm you use, but you're gonna do a cross over the chest with both. So you're gonna go like this and then like this. And once you're here, you want to suck in the stomach, right? Like you want your stomach to go all the way to your spine as much as possible. And then once you're here, we're going to bend the knees a little bit. You bend the knees. You're going to let the arms fall out in front of you. Palms facing, facing up this time. And you're going to lift energy up over you, over your crown chakra. And then you're going to stay here for like three seconds. Once you're here, you're gonna bring this down to your heart center. And then you open up. So that's one technique. Another more simple one that I like to practice a lot at work, especially when I'm dealing with a lot of people, it's simple. All you do is you sweep the aura and um, you can do this like anywhere, really. So I like to sweep the aura. You kind of like pretend your fingers are, are a broom or something and you kind of sweep around. You go all over, shoulders, front. You send all the negative energy down to the earth and you kind of just sweep around your aura. And then you want to fluff the aura. You do this three times. You fluff the aura. So you grab your fingers, pretend your aura it looks like cotton candy and you want to just kind of like Band. Oh. Everywhere. Back, front, side. Kind of just open up. That's another way, but yeah. Victor, I, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I Hope can feel that, that here. Can everybody feel that? I mean, just just watching him do that, that this is how visualizations can be so helpful. Um, I can feel the energy clearing just from watching you do that. Um, wow. And I think that that is what is so powerful about how we can work on ourselves and learn these techniques. Kelly, did you have I have a question. Uh, two things. Victor, so when you were doing the uh, room sweeping, I really like that. One question is, is that akin to what Devin and Tracy talk about cutting cords is that basically the same thing and then yes we should go back to talking about the cotton candy i missed that <laughs> so that's just what i imagined in my mind so it's like the best way to express it is like i like think of your aura like looking like a invisible cotton candy the fluffier the better you know fluffing, um, it. Fluffing. fluffing it yeah so you pull it out pull, 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 pull out. You grab it like you're grabbing and then you fluff it. Wow. Especially if you need protection or if you're, you know you're about to go into a negative environment with a negative coworker or whatever. I like you, you want to fluff your aura all the time. Look, I'm sweating mm -hmm. already because it feels like I usually get really hot during Reiki. Me too. Um, but anyways, yeah, like. The other question was, is your broom sweeping your aura? Is that basically like cutting cords? In a way, for Reiki techniques, yes. However, I have had one of the cutting cords meditations with Tracy, and it's, it's definitely more in depth with like a connection of 
whatever cord you're trying to cut with. I think that the sweeping the aura to me is more like in the moment and um, I'm about to go in. I feel like the cutting cords with Tracy's is more of like a specific thing or person that you're focusing on. Um, the sweeping the aura would be more general. We will be talking to Tracy next week about that. Um, and yes, I agree with you. I learned the cord cutting first before I got my Reiki training, but it is so similar. And going back to what you said, uh, Victor, about the um, intention, right? The, it all comes back down to that. Um, you know, it is very similar, but if you know there's a particular cord that needs to be cut, um, it's going to be more effective and less likely to reattach if we have that intention. And so a specific meditation for cutting that cord can be very valuable. And depending on whether it's a, a what type of cord it is, you could do, um, I cut cords at least once a day, but I also do it with, um, after I get off a call with somebody who is anxious or I do it, like I see a news article, I cut cords with that title that I didn't want to see. <laughs> um, mm. So, but this, the sweeping and stuff, uh, Victor, is something that I feel immediately. And so, yeah, I, I wake up in the morning and I do a big sweeping of my aura and everything. And um, I don't know, I personally, I know that there's a lot of healers that don't believe you need crystals. I just love crystals. I agree that you don't need them. They're a tool, but I also use a selenite wand when I'm doing the sweeping of my aura that feels really good as well just to throw that in there. Um, does anybody else have any other questions before we wrap up? I, I really appreciate you all being here. I know we had a yes. um, rough beginnings, but we wanna do more of this. Next week is gonna be, um, like I said, we're gonna be talking with Tracy Day. That's who we're referring to either. She, she uh, is a meditation teacher. She is here locally in San Antonio um, and was holding meditations in person to teach, but is now doing it virtually. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and what she does. She's a life and health coach as well. Um, and a good friend and colleague of Victor's and mine. So, and I know some of several of you here work with her as well. Uh, but thank you guys. Uh, Victor, what, how can everybody find you? Sure. So um, if you have Instagram or Facebook, either or, um, Vic Bore, or the Reiki Room South Town, both the Reiki Room South Town. On, uh, uh, for on Facebook, Facebook okay. or Instagram, yeah. Um, once, I'm obviously not seeing any clients um, until whenever we have the okay. And, but if you want to talk or you want to know more about Reiki or even like do a Reiki session um, distance, I'd be more than happy. I'm also not necessarily charging like physical money for that. Um, but, you know, as an exchange, we can figure something out. Maybe you can send me some prayers or something, you know, uh, just because I feel like we need this more than ever. So I am available. Um, and then, of course, you can go with Devin and she has my cell phone number. You can just send me a text or something. Absolutely. Um, Bonnie, I know you have to sign off. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Love. Thank you so thank you, much Bonnie. for doing this, guys. See you next time. Thanks, Bonnie. Uh, Kelly, um, do, what, what was your one more question? Well, one more question is where are you going to post the link and where? Because I can think of like Janet and so many people who would have really benefited from being here but had schedule conflicts. So where will you be posting it and when? I'm going to be posting it on my YouTube channel. So anybody can go watch it anytime just by going to my YouTube channel, um, Devin Dewar. Um, and then I'm going to be posting it on my Facebook page and Instagram. Um, those are tricky with how they let you share links, especially Instagram, but you can always copy and paste it into your browser. Um, but yeah, it's going to take a little time for the live feed to wrap up and submit itself as a video. So it's not going to be available within a couple minutes, but it will be available today. Um, and so then you can just share that video. And I do very much appreciate you guys sharing videos um, and help spreading the word about this because we are going to be doing more. And um, 
So yeah, um, thank you so much. And uh, Victor, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, I think that I just want to say thank you to everyone for being here and for sharing your time with us. We appreciate it. Well, thank you so much, Victor. Thank you to thank all you. of you. Um, and please, you know, check out what we've got going on next week. We're going to have more of this and any feedback or comments you have, we much appreciate it. Um, you can go to my website, devindoer.com under events to see what's coming up as well. So that's another place I'll have the link, Kelly, um, for that. And then if you go under free stuff, I'll have the link to this video. Right. I can um, speak of so many people. Victor, this was so beneficial. I don't know if you remember me, but yes, of course. I was scheduled to I know, I'm so sorry. No, you did the right thing and I understand. So I will be doing I will be as soon as we hang up, I'm going to be texting you and say, let's do a distance. But I want to be your first customer back when, when this was magnificent. Just magnificent. I love learned and I love, <laughs> you're awesome. You're such a good teacher to bring to teachers. Woo! Thank you. Woo! <laughs> Positive. <laughs> Positive vibes. Absolutely. Well, I hope everybody stays healthy and thank you so yes. much. Um, let's meet again soon. Okay, everybody? Thank Much you. Much love. Bye. Bye, everyone.